Hey, what's going on everybody? In this video, I'm going to show you how I use Django and Cloudinary's API to be able to allow my users of this application that I'm building to upload videos from their computer into the cloud for use within this app. Just a little bit of pretext here. The app itself is essentially going to be a creator platform that allows people to create content, video content specifically, and sell that content. So instead of creating like an entire course of videos, they'll be able to release one video at a time and sell it for a lesser value than the course as a whole. That way they can create one off courses like a single video for an entire course, or they can release a course incrementally. Either way, the creator can get paid while they're creating the course as opposed to having to create everything all at once and wait to get paid later. This is a great feedback mechanism. They can allow the creator to find out what's working, what's not working. And also it's great for the end user because they only pay for what they want. And as you'll see here in a moment, we're gonna have a feature that allows the users to preview each video before purchasing it. So let's say you have a video that's 10 minutes long, then the application is going to auto-generate a preview of that video that's only a third of the length. So it's only gonna be a few minutes long and it'll be just enough to hook the user in and give them an idea of how your teaching style is or whatever the content may be, how the video is gonna be overall, but not enough for them to get the entire video. So then if they decide this video is really cool, I wish I had the whole thing, they can go ahead and pay for that and then unlock the entire full video. So let's back up a little bit. We're not that far along in the application yet. I did choose a Django stack because I love writing in Python and Django has a lot of batteries included. So it gets a lot of the more complex things like user authentication out of your way and allows you to really focus in on the logic layer of your application. Here we have a pretty bare bones Django application. Currently it only has one app specifically for videos. And that's because what we're doing is what's called a spike or some people uh, might call it a proof of concept, but essentially we're just going in here and trying one specific feature of the larger application to make sure that it's gonna work the way that we want it to. And if we encounter any roadblocks, we can address those early on. So the feature here, as you can see in the preview planning is outlined uh, in like a user story. And so a user of the application should be able to upload a video file to Cloudinary. Now this user would be someone on the creator side. So we're gonna have multiple types of users, the users that are like the consumer and then the user that is the seller. And so this would be a seller, someone that wants to sell their content on the application. So this seller, once they're logged in, they should be able to upload a video file to Cloudinary. So Cloudinary is our cloud hosting platform of choice because they have a really great, simple, easy API to work with. And it just integrates really well with Python and a bunch of other languages. In addition to that, I should mention, they also have a bunch of really cool things you can do with the videos once they're in the cloud with transformations and things like that. We're not going to do that in this specific video, but there is a bunch of really cool things available to you once you get your video up into the cloud. All right, so what's needed for this specific user story? We need a page with a form that accepts video files. So we need an upload form on an HTML page that will accept any type of video file. In order to have that happen in Django, we need a URL, we need a view or a view function, and we need a template or an HTML file. Eventually, we're gonna move all this logic for the uploading of the videos out of the view layer and into what's called a background job. Basically, something that can run on a separate process so that it's not blocking all of our HTTP requests. All right, cool. So with that out of the way, let's take a look at the views.py. So views.py, if you're familiar with Django, you already know what this is. If you're coming from something like Laravel or Rails or Nest or anything like that, then you might be more used to an MVC framework, model view controller. Django likes to be a little bit different. They use MVT, model view template. And so the word view is not interchangeable with the word view from MVC. It's actually closer to what a controller is in MVC. So essentially the view layer of your MVT or your Django application is gonna be where you're gonna include all of your logic. So we put this inside of functions. If you're coming from Rails, it would be the methods that you have inside of like your controller file. So this function specifically called create is going to be the function that allows us to create a video or upload a video. So it has two sides to it. 
there's when a user first visits the URL or the route that's associated with this view function, that's going to be a get request. And that's just simply going to load the form on the page. We also have the situation where they submit the form. And the way that Django likes to handle that is that we can put the logic all together inside of a single function and we'll check whether or not it's a get request or a post request. And if it's a get request, we'll handle it one way. If it's a post request, we'll handle it another. We have a decorator up here at the top, require HTTP methods, which essentially only allows get and post since we indicated both of these here. These two requests will be allowed. Anything else put patch delete will not be allowed. This is going to be our get request here, these first three lines, if request.method is equal to get, then we just create a form from something called video upload form. This is essentially something I'm importing from a separate file, a forms file, and all it does is just Django magic that says, hey, tell us which attributes you want your form to have, which inputs, and we'll handle all the rest for you. So I said, hey, I want a title and I want a video file, and I want the video file to, to actually be a video file. I want the title to be just like a text input. And so that happens over here in the forms.py. You can see we've got the title, which is a forms care field, max length 100, and then a video file, which is forms file field. So again, the reason I chose Django, it's got a lot of stuff built in and it's going to generate a lot of code and save us a lot of time. So I'm a huge fan of that. You may have also noticed, maybe you probably can't tell this looks kind of like VS code, but I'm working inside of a code editor called Cursor which is an AI driven code editor and allows me to auto generate a lot of code and also talk with the code base, talk with the documentation in a chat format and really speeds up my workflow. If you're not familiar with it, check the description for this video, I'll include a link for it. So the main two things with the application here, of course, is that we're building it with the Django web framework, which is based on Python. And we're using the Cloudinary API for the video uploads. But the third thing is that we're building it inside of Cursor, which is pretty paramount and that it's going to allow us to build really quickly. Now let's move on to the elif here, where we say elif request.method is equal to post. So this is just an else if, if you're not familiar with Python, it's saying, hey, the if statement didn't go through because it's not a get request, it must be something else. Let's check and see if it's a post request. Technically at this point, because of the required HTTP methods decorator that I have up here, this could just be an else. I like to be super explicit. So I am explicitly saying, hey, check and see if this is a post request. If it is, now we get into the logic that handles the situation where we have a video that has just been submitted. So the first thing we do is we bring in our form and we pass in the request post and the request files. So this is going to have all the data from the form from the post request. Then we let Django do some validation, check and make sure that form is valid. If it is valid, then we can extract the video file and the title from the clean data of that form. So a bunch of really nice stuff built in here from Django. Again, they just make sure that we're not getting anything malicious from the form. All right, so the next thing is this FS is equal to file system storage. This is essentially necessary because the default behavior of a upload form in Django is that it puts it in a temporary file. So that's just going to go somewhere in your file system, but it's not super reliable because the file could be cleaned up as is common with temporary files before your logic gets a chance to actually do something with that file and process it. So what I did here is I'm using file system storage to take the file that's been uploaded and move it somewhere a little more persistent while I need it. And then once I'm done processing it, I'll delete that down at the bottom of this function. So I need the file name. I can extract that here on line 42 using the file name from the video file that we pulled from the form. And we go ahead and create an input path. So the input path is going to be important because we're going to use that with some functions that we wrote for trimming the video. The trimming of the video is going to be so that we can generate the preview of the video. So let's say the video is nine minutes. We trim down by a third, we get a three minute video. All right, so then we need to get the output path. So that's where we can indicate this is where the file is going to go. And this file specifically is going to be the preview. So the input is going to be the full video. And then the output after I'm done trimming is going to be the preview. So I modify the file name a little bit just to indicate that this is the preview. I put the word underscore preview at the end of the file name before the file extension. So that's what this little block of code is doing here, 41 through 45. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do 
is get the trimmed duration. So in order for us to trim a video, we first have to know how long the video is. So we have another function here called get trimmed video duration. Jump down here, take a look at that. Essentially, it's going to use a feature of FFMPEG called probe, takes in the input path, gets the video info for that specific file, and then we can pull the duration from that. Once we have the duration, we're going to divide it by three so that we can get a third of the video length and we'll return that from this function. So that's what we get here on line 48. Now that we have the trimmed duration, we want to take the input path, the output path that we generated from the input path and the trim duration and pass it all into trim video. This is going to be the logic that's actually going to trim the video file down to a preview. So we use again FFMPEG and we say input is the input path, output is the output path, and then we set t equal to the trim duration. So essentially it's going to start from the beginning of the video file all the way through to the trim duration. So if the, again, if the video is like nine minutes long and we divide it by three, then we're down to three minutes. And so it's going to go from zero minutes to three minutes. Then we just need to run this and we have something in here called overwrite output, which is essentially just going to overwrite the file if it already exists. All right, cool. So that's the trimming of the video. Now, we're going to upload the full video, the original video, and the preview video, which is our trimmed version, to Cloudinary. So that logic is going to happen inside of upload to Cloudinary. We can go down to this function and take a look at what's happening here. So this accepts three arguments. One of them is defaulted and therefore optional. So the first one is the file that we want to upload. The second one is the public ID, assuming we don't want to automatically create one. And then we're checking to see if there's a file path, which is false by default. Okay, if there is a file path, then we're going to use with open and we're going to pass in the file, get that video file, and we're going to upload it. When we upload it, we're using the Cloudinary API. It has something called uploader. And then there's something called upload, but in this case, we're using upload underscore large because we don't know how big these video files are going to be. And so we don't want to make any assumptions about them being smaller files. There's a 100 megabyte limit on the Cloudinary uploader upload method. And what we can do here with upload large is it'll actually break the video file up into smaller chunks, upload them incrementally, and then combine them together in the cloud. And so the default here is 20 megabyte chunks. I know for a fact the video that we're going to use is 40 megabytes, so we'd actually end up with two chunks, and then it would combine them for us. So we pass in the video file. We tell it the resource type is a video as opposed to something like an image and then we pass in the public ID. So the public ID is just gonna be the way that we identify it. It's essentially the file name. All right, and the else statement here is when we don't have the file path included, and then it's just the same logic, essentially. All right, the last thing we wanna do here is return the secure URL from the response of uploading this to Cloudinary. So Cloudinary is going to send us back a response. It's gonna be a large object with a lot of information in it. What we're most concerned with, at least for the sake of this video demo, is the secure URL. There are a URL and a secure URL. The secure URL is, as it's named, has an SSL HTTPS at the very beginning of it. That is it for uploading the Cloudinary, pretty simple. Now this logic exists currently inside the view, which means it exists inside of the HTTP layer, which is not ideal for a production application. That is not how I'm going to do it. Whenever I'm done building the app, I'm actually going to defer this logic over to a background process so that it can happen on a separate process and not interrupt the user experience. For now, for testing purposes, it's totally fine to have it where it is. All right, so you can even see that I have some debugging stuff here. This is just for the sake of the demo so that we can actually see the output of the secure URL. We can go visit it and we can look at the videos live in the cloud. At the end, I have something called cleanup files, which is just going to go through and delete the files that we uploaded to our project directory. So if you remember from earlier, normally the file upload feature in Django will send the file over to a temporary file, which is not super reliable for what we need to do with the processing. So we actually copied it over here to our project directory. We don't want a bunch of files to live in our project directory. So cleanup files will delete them after we're done processing them. And by processing, I mean trimming and uploading to Cloudinary. All right, cool. So that's all the logic within those functions. We can go back here and finish out the rest of this function here, just so you can see exactly what all is happening. Just to recap, we get the trimmed duration of the full video, and then we go ahead and trim the video using that duration. And then we upload the full video and the preview video 
using the trimmed version. And ultimately what we end up with are these two URLs, which we're then going to print to the console just so we can visit them in the cloud and take a look at what was generated for us. We have some error handling here, lets us know if anything's gone wrong. And then finally, after all this is done, we go ahead and clean up our files. And once all that's done, we actually respond, hey, the video was uploaded successfully. So let's go ahead and try this out. I've got my server running here, Python managed Py run server for those of you that aren't familiar with Django. And let's jump on over here. This is the slash video slash create URL. And we can give it a title. You could derive the title from the file name if you want to, but in this case, I'm thinking content creator, kind of like when you upload a video for YouTube or something, you probably want to have a title and there'll be some additional meta information, the description and things like that, that you'll want to include as well. So for the sake of the demo for the title, we'll just say test video, and then we'll go ahead and find a video. So this is just a video I made the other day for essentially using Cloudinary to decrease the page load time or increase the page speed of your static websites with their CDN for image uploads. So we'll go ahead and upload this video and you won't see anything happening here. If your browser wasn't full screen, you'd see the wheel spinning, but we can jump back over into here, the code editor, and we can take a look at the output. So everything we're seeing here currently is from FFmpeg or FFmpeg and this is running locally on the computer where it's doing these transformations. So it's trimming the video and then it's re-rendering a new version of the video based on a specific codec and based on the amount of time that you want it to trim and all that stuff. So this is just a bunch of gobbledygook that we don't really have to understand, but this is useful because if there was an error because of the way we wrote our error handling, we would see that here. Ultimately, when this is done processing and the video gets uploaded, what we'll see here is the URL, the secure URL to both the full video and its preview version on Cloudinary. And sure enough, here we are with the full video. You see testvideo.mp4. The percent 20 is just because there's a space in the title and that's how it gets encoded. And then we have test video underscore preview, which is the preview version. So let's go ahead and look at both of these. This is the main one. You can see it's 11 minutes and 19 seconds. And it's just a uh, video of me coding some stuff. All right, so we'll jump out of here and we'll go view the preview. All right, so that last one was about 11 minutes long. This one is three, a little more than three and a half, three and three quarters minute long. So you can see that it's a third of the original. So there's still plenty of video for the user to go in and get an idea of what exactly the video entails without actually getting access to the full video. So if they're far enough along in the video to where they can get an idea of the value of the video without actually seeing the entire video, then they can decide whether or not they wanna purchase it or move on to something else. So that's pretty much it for what I've done so far. You can see here, we've got the URLs to Cloudinary. Cloudinary actually has a transformation API with the URLs where you literally just put in like where you want the transformation to start and stop in terms of trimming. The only problem with that is that if you take those out of the URL, somehow you're able to get access to the URL. Like if you were savvy and you went into the developer console into the network tab and you found the you know asset that was being downloaded into the browser or streamed to the browser, then you would see, oh, it's got this thing on here. Not everybody's going to know to do that, but if somebody did, then they could very easily get access to the full video uh, without actually paying for it. So that's why we use FFmpeg here to trim the videos down instead of using the Cloudinary Transformations API. But Cloudinary, really fast to upload to with these videos, and it has a lot of options once they are uploaded, including the customization of the video player and how you want to embed that into your website, which will be pretty integral when we get to that point in the creation of this application. Thanks a lot for joining me in this video. I hope you learned a lot. If you have any questions about this project or about how to create video upload inside of your Django applications or any application for that matter, could be Express, could be React, doesn't matter. Feel free to reach out. I'll have a link to the current code base for this project in the description of this video if you wanna see how I did it line by line. Otherwise, we will see you all in the next video. Thanks for hanging out and peace.